Hello, Barney Cuddier, and today I thought we'd do a complete walkthrough guide of Super Liminal. Now, this is a very, very cool game. Do you find yourself prone to minimizing massive dilemmas or for allowing the smallest problems to get blown completely out of proportion? At the Pierce Institute, our patent pending somnoscope technology provides sleep and effective dream therapy while we rest in the comfort of our flagship clinic. Located right next to the secondary overflow parking lot of the University Medical Center. Somnoscope, we'll make your dreams come true. Yeah, so I'm going to stay quiet through all the cutscenes and... Uh, well, through everyone talking as well, there's a few radios you can find, and I'll stay quiet through all that as well, just so you can uh, see the story. Right, so, it's quite an interesting game, in the sense that you can make things bigger and smaller based on the perspective of things. And if you're wondering what I mean by that, well, here's the perfect time to show you. So, as you can see, you've got four chess pieces. If I pick one of these up and move it up here and drop it it stays at the perspective that you're looking at it if that makes sense so if you keep doing that you can make these things huge and again to make it smaller you pick it up and you can move it so it's a really small sp perspective and you can uh, make it really small so we'll get straight into it then and um, this is the first not so much um, an obstacle because remember you can pick things up and you can make them much smaller. So this huge, I'm not sure what chess piece this is. Um, it's a ca it's a castle, but <laughs> um, and and that's it. It's, it's as easy as that. So you will be faced with Terms all of sorts. Accepted. Congratulations on falling asleep. Welcome to Somnasculpt. Your progress may be monitored by qualified specialists. This orientation will adapt you to eyelids, our interactive, lucid induction dream state in which you retain full consciousness and control. And there we go. So, as you can see, you can move things around and there's, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. So, remember you can pick any, anything up from any distance as well. So, if we stand on this button, you can see that there's something on that table. We can pick that up. There we go. And we can put that on the button. And that's it, we can keep the door open. And once you understand that, it's pretty much it's pretty much easy plain sailing. There's a few um a few things later on which I'll show you. Now remember our little trick where we pick things up and drop them to make the perspective a little bit bigger. We can keep doing that. Make it nice and big. And then hopefully there we go. Now with this, you might notice like a little door here. You can't bring things in through this door. You can't bring items in or out. Um, so you've got to come in plain handed. This is quite cool. Uh, chess piece and it's... Confirm. You can move freely, interact with surrounding objects and listen to messages from your patient care team. Please note that I am the standard orientation protocol and that my voice has been explicitly chosen to remind you that I am not a part of your patient care team. I do not care. Right, so on this one then, obviously there's a button on this side and there's a chess piece on this side. So all you've got to do is pick this up and put it on the button. It's as simple as that. So let's keep going then. Right, we've got a piece of cheese. Now, there's a door up there and obviously the cheese can act as a ramp. So we can put this right up here and drop it. And that should make this perspective huge on this thing. Like so. Really easy. Now this year I've got to make it massive. Um, because the door is quite big up. But if you hold your right mouse button down. As it says on the instructions. You can easily. We should be able to get up that now. Oh just. Just got in. Uh, you can eyelids, rotate. You will lose the ability to awaken suddenly due to realizing that this is a dream. Evidence. I have already informed you that this is a dream. You did not wake up. 
Please complete the remaining orientation activities. Right, so there's a huge block here and there's a tiny little button there. So remember, you can pick stuff up, make it tiny into perspective, and then you can pick it up and place it on the button. Like so. Um, there is a couple of hidden bits on the map. Um, it doesn't really do a lot, but I'll show you it anyway. Um, it'll tell you. Warning. You have deviated from the orientation pathway. At the Pierce Institute, patient safety is a keynote in our corporate priority tetrahedron. A variable degree of force cannon will be authorized to ensure patient safety. Please return to the orientation pathway. Yeah, don't worry when it says lethal force or whatever. It, it, that's not the case at all. Now, this is what I was saying. Because I've got a can in my hand, I literally can't get through the door until I put the can down. Like so. And then you can't pick it up from the other side. So it's just something to watch because there's a lot of these doors around. So, on this one then, we've got a button down there with smash window, and on this side, we've got a block. I'm pretty sure you can already guess what we need to do. So, on this one then, we can easily drop it down, or make the um, block a little bit smaller. Right, so, it's a little bit fiddly, but don't worry. Uh, and then you can drop it in, like that. Nice and easy. All environments perceived during eyelids should reflect a typical mental state. If you believe your mental state was compromised by Somnascult, please provide a comprehensive rational explanation in your post-procedural survey. Completed surveys may be eligible for a gift card. Now, with this room, you've got to get this into that room, but obviously you can't get through here. So, you can get it all there. Now, there's a million different ways you can get it over. You can either drop it, like so there we go or you can throw it over it's up to you how you do it um throwing it is a little bit more tricky there we go nice and easy so far um the easiest way to go with this is if you're ever stuck on this game these are like infinite loops and they just go forever look for the exit signs and always follow the exit signs and they'll get you out of the infinite loop so next room then you might notice one opens that one and the next button opens this one that is a little bit wonky and if you hover over it you can actually see but you can pick it up so again look how big it is with a perspective if we make this thing huge and drop it we can actually cover two buttons at the same time oh that's the plan anyway i'm hoping i didn't quite get that button um, we'll get there. It's it's a little bit fiddly. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go. And then that opens both doors at once. Let's get through here. Nice and easy. Stand by for polite recognition on your completion of the Somnasculpt orientation. You did it. To maximize the time allotted for your therapeutic journey, please do not delay in proceeding through the final doorway as indicated. Now, with this one, with this room, you might have noticed that there's lots of walls and stuff, what's um, what's bent. That means you can knock them down. So, obviously you can't get through there. So, we need something to knock it down. And if you look through here, there's a little piece of cheese. So, we can pick this up. And we can just literally drop the cheese against the walls. And eventually when the cheese gets big enough. You'll be able to. Use it as a bit of a battering ram. This one's a, a little bit fiddly this one. Because you have got to make sure you get the cheese big first. Before you start. Messing about trying to knock walls down. So. There we go. Remember, follow the exit signs. And let's go. Quite easy so far. It does get a little bit tricky in the sense that some of them, even, even when you know what you're doing, it, it takes it out of you a little bit. 
um, because you know what you should be doing, but it's so fiddly. There we go. Um, if you notice, well, you always end up back in this room, um, and the time goes on by roughly an hour each time. So we're on 3 a.m. at the minute. So there will be a lot of these corridors. Um, so I'll get through it. And each time you wake up, you end up in like a different area. And it's meant to be like a different sort of dream state. Now, there's a door here. If you pick this up, there you go. You can get through there and you can follow the exit signs. Um, this is quite cool. It's like a per perspective trick. So it looks like the end of a corridor. And th there's lots of these what are all slung in. And um, it is, it's pretty cool. So again, a door. A door, um, and if you look here, exit temporarily removed. Because down here, this is quite cool, this is another perspective trick. It's actually a <laughs> 3D uh, doorway sticking out, which is pretty cool. So, if you go this way, again, it's another perspective trick. It, it, the whole game just plays tricks on you constantly. So, we're in the next room then, and if you look, you can actually get over here. So remember, perspective tricks, you can pick all these things up and you can use them um, to your heart's content, really. There we go. Um, you can use these as ramps and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's, it's really, the world is pretty much your oyster on this. Um, so all we've got to do is get over. get over the uh, the top so that's probably not the best way to do it we'll get there don't we we will get there there we go right let's see if this works um, we might not have the angle quite right but we'll, we'll have a look yeah we can and there we go it's as simple as that now, you'll notice a lot of these radios knocking around. And if you hit the radio... Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. And I'd like to talk to you about being special. So special, in fact, that we have no idea where you are. But not to worry, we're working on it. Right, so... um. You might notice then lots of paint on here, and remember, it's a perspective game, so if you make your perspective, so you can actually see, there we go, and we've got a little block, and then we can use the block to get out, nice and easy, uh, remember there's no doors here, so we can bring this with us if we want, which we do need to, so we'll put that there. And then we need another block to get on that because that door's a little bit too high. So, remember, perspective. Now, you might notice like a little flower pot there missing. It's actually there, but obviously it's flat. So on this table, there's like a little um, bottom, of a, bottom of a table like that. So if we use this as perspective first, like so, there we go, it's knocked that on. And then we can finish off the flower. There we go. So I'm hoping you, you're starting to get an idea and understanding of how the game works. It's Oh, we just got up. We're going to bring this with us. It never hurts to bring stuff with you. There we go. Um, on this one, there's a little door. And there's a piece missing off the door. So obviously there's going to be some paint on one of these um, things that we need to uh, get into perspective and there is luck. So there we go and then we can move the door. Simple as that. Nice and easy. It's easy when you know how. And there's a couple of these bits I was stuck on for a long time so there's another radio here as well. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. And I'm just popping in to give you a quick update on where you are. We still don't know, but please keep moving forward 
and hopefully you prefer frequent updates to being reminded that you are completely lost. Thanks for that, Glenn. Um, right, there's a block up here, so you can use that to get on top. I mean, it's up to you. You can either put it on that bit. It really doesn't matter. You can put it anywhere you want. Um, as long as you can get up, which that should be enough, maybe. It is. Remember, never hurts to bring stuff with you. And then we should be able to line that up. There we go. And that's where you need to go. But there is a little hidden room here. Um, I'll show you what's up here. It's not an awful lot, so don't get your hopes up. So don't get your hopes up. But um, here we go. So you can run up here, and there's lots of stuff inside. A, well, yeah, what well, whatever it is, loads loads of chess pieces inside. But there's nothing else, nothing else at all. Um, there's a couple of fire things you can pull. They literally don't do anything. Um, and there's a little gap down there. I've tried dropping stuff down there, and it just reappears there. So anyway. Let's go. Again, there's nothing much here. There's not much point in bringing stuff with you for the simple fact you can't get it through this door. So, if you look down now, that is where we made the... Um, I'll hit this radio first. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and we still can't find you. But you should now have access to a series of elevators that should trigger your subconscious to gradually wake you up. You should also find a variety of emergency exit signs that should lead you to them. Will all of this work? Absolutely. So if you remember, that's the exit sign, what we propped up and we've gone through and we've gone all up, so it's all linking. And because it's perspective, we can pick this up. <laughs> or if we drop it down, it makes it humongous. Don't really matter too much because we can't get it through here. Um, now this room I was stuck on for about 15 minutes. And I couldn't work out what to do. But now I know exactly what to do. You need a doorway. And there's nothing you can pick up anywhere in this room. But if you look up. Right so. You might notice a moon. And you can pick the moon up. And obviously because it's a moon. It stays anywhere. Because it's in orbit. So, there's another radio. Let's listen to this. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. In the event that this elevator does not wake you up, please don't interact with anything that strikes you as psychologically significant, as we will no longer have any way of controlling it. For example, if you see your parents, please punch them in the face as hard as you can and immediately run away. Right, so you don't actually have to have the doorway there. You can put it anywhere because it's just a perspective thing. But you have got to make it big enough to actually walk through. So, for example, you can literally put the doorway there if you want. It really doesn't make a difference. So, let's go through. And again, you can... Th this, this little thing here will come in handy for a puzzle later on. So, um, that's cool to take in mind. So, we've got a lift. There's quite a few lifts in the game, um, and I think what they're designed to do is just to take you to new places, wake you up, and all sorts of stuff like that, so. And here we go. So now we're on 4am. Again, same corridor, walk through it, not much changes. You do get very mild changes throughout the game, but don't worry too much about that. So we're in the next area, which is some sort of. This is an automated message for all patients who attempted to use an alternate pathway to access the next phase of Somnasculpt therapy, but who have become trapped in a dream state paradox instead. Your decisions imply a failure of orientation, which reflects negatively on the standard orientation protocol. You will rectify this failure immediately. Right, so obviously we need to get up there. There is a little die in the corner. Remember, it's all about perspective. So if you keep the bottom bit up to the ledge, it'll drop it on this side. If you keep the bottom bit above the ledge, it'll drop it up top. 
and that's pretty much all you have to remember about the perspective. I, I don't think this is high enough. Oh, it is. Just we'll bring it with us because it won't hurt. And we have to get up there. So there's another dice and there's all sorts of stuff. Um, right, that should be high enough. So the little dice here is a little lamp. Or supposed to be a little lamp. You don't have to use it as a lamp. You can just uh, use it as this. Um, so we can actually get up here. Right. Remember, never hurts to bring stuff with you. Right, now on this, um, I must have got stuck on this for a good minute because there's nothing around here. Um, you can't get through here. So what you have to do is, remember, follow the exit signs. Everything means something on this game. So this way to fall. So you should be aiming to fall. So look for everything you can pick up. And if you look at this, there we go. And we can drop it down. Now, there's a little light. What you can do is pick the light up and you can twizzle it so you can see exactly what's happening. That's a chessboard, that's uh, that's nothing. So you, then what we can do. There we go. Professional tip, the average adult can only withstand three to five dreams per night. Once this threshold is eclipsed by entering more dreams, your mind will suffer an explosive mental overload, reorienting you for the emergency exit protocol. Please subject yourself to explosive mental overload. Right, that's pretty cool as well. Another uh, perspective trick. You'll get a hell of a lot of them. Remember, there's not much point in bringing stuff with you when there's these little doorways around, but... Right, this is a slightly different little trick. We have to get up there, and these die. Move up, down left or right like so now the idea is move this one all the way down move this one all the way across and then you can use it to jump oh nearly didn't make that but that's how you do it um please note that a reluctance to volunteer for the risks associated with explosive mental overload implies a misunderstanding of all other solutions all of which are far more traumatic and likelier to result in catastrophe I am not capable of suboptimal suggestions. Please exit this dream as soon as possible. So that one, obviously, the dice break apart. Just make one a ramp and uh, put it on and you can get up nice and easy. Again, this is probably one of the easier ones because the dice breaks to bits anyway. And each one of them then is its own die so you can literally just mess about and you can get up there there's no issues with that now with this one if you go to pick it up it'll pull off one side and this should be the next area there we go right so I'll have a quick look down here another little lift jump in the lift and away we go Nice and easy so far, when you know what you're doing. And we've woke up on 5am. Right. Again, you'll notice very mild changes um, as you're walking through here. There's actually a radio on here now, so I'll listen to this. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and despite touring the Waterfall Serenity Zone in the previous section you've just completed, you may still be experiencing feelings of worthlessness and self-doubt. Why do I feel like everything is going wrong, even when the sun is shining? Now, this is by far my least favourite area. <laughs> by far my least favourite area. This is like a nightmare area now. Um, so this is like, well, exactly what it says on tin, it's like a nightmare. Uh, this lasts much longer than it should. <laughs> so um, there's a few little things, like if you walk over here, there you go, there's like a little jump scare and stuff, and yeah, I, I really don't like this area. Um, so, just keep heading in a straight line if you don't want to get scared. 
and th there's a few things on here like Monday murder 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 and on Sunday beans it it don't really mean too much to be fair but I've got a top tip for this area if you walk backwards away from it so you've got the light in perspective until it comes to a complete stop then you've got a left and right area yeah if you're walking dead on into the um, night time you, you get disorientated and you don't really know which way you're going so there's, there's a few different areas like I say it's a little bit a little bit interesting I've got to do a little a little sneaky jump to get through that um, but once you're through it yeah thank, thanks for that uh, now on this bit you can follow it and you can see just a little walkway um, a couple of these walkways will lead to dead ends like this um, but all you've got to really do is just look there we go and that's that's pretty much it. it it's very easy if you fall off it just plonks you back on again so don't don't worry about dying or anything like that um, another little radio hello my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'd like to talk more about the feelings of worthlessness and self-doubt I mentioned before. You feel this way because you want the kind of happy life you see all around you, the kind you know everyone else is enjoying. And that's exactly why we're here to help. Again, if you look towards the light and walk backwards, it'll give you a much better understanding of what's going on so there's a little arrow telling you to go upstairs and it's just little stuff like that if um, as long as you keep something in perspective then uh, you should be fine so let's walk through here warning you were advised to subject yourself to explosive mental overload by descending into additional dreams but have now descended into a dream within a dream instead disorienting yourself even further you are responsible for failing to make this crucial distinction. Now, with this, obviously, we need the light to get through here. Um, this is quite disorientating, but... When I say quite disorientating, what, what you can do... There's lots of different ways you can do it. You can make the light nice and big, and then you can use that as an actual light so you can see what you're doing um, oh, I wonder why I can't get through um, after you've done that you can pick the light back up and use it to get through and th there's lots of different ways and different stuff to do it it's up to you how you do it but that's you need the light for it so remember we can't bring anything through here so let's leave that now on this one it looks like you can't get through there's no way you can go um, it's relatively easy this one remember everything means everything in this game so you've got huge glass windows and we already know that these things give off light so if we shine the light through the massive glass windows you'll see that there's actually a doorway up there so all we have to do is do a bit of parkour parkour whatever you want to say get through here and that's the next section done easy as that did you know that unintentional multi-dream layering occurs in less than 1% of patients? This correlates strongly with the 99% of patients who are able to follow simple instructions from the standard orientation protocol. Right, so the next area then. You might notice you've got like a little Ikea down here. Or idea, as it's, <laughs> as it's called. Um, there we go. All you have to do is turn the generator on. Let's just get out of this area as fast as. Um, and back into the left. And that's that area done. Nice and easy. That That's the worst area for me. I hate that area. <laughs> but it's done now. Right, you'll notice like the, the different loading signs are always different as well, which is pretty cool. Right, we're now on at 6am. So... There we go. You don't really have to do that, but whatever. It's, it's, it's a bit of, bit of fun. So let's get through here. Again, very mild changes. I, I promise I won't say that anymore. I know I keep saying it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. So the next area then. 
this works slightly different. Um, this is a different sort of perspective. Um, so this tends to make things smaller, if I remember correctly. And it does it there. There you go. So these are bolted all the way down. So you can't pick them up, but we need something to stand on this. So remember what we did last time. So all we have to do is get a few on floor, make a pile of them. And then what we can do is do a trail of them. If you stand further away, it makes it easier because remember perspective. A trail all the way in. If you stood really close, you have to do about a million uh, presses. So don't don't fall for that one. In fact, you'll have to get closer when it gets to the button, so obviously the button doesn't doesn't obscure your view. And there we go. Quite annoying, but it is what it is. We've got there. You only have to do it once. Technically, you have to do it once. Um, right, you've got doors again. And remember, this is the perspective where things get smaller. Yeah? So that's something to remember. It's always nice to have a play around with stuff in every um, every zone so you can understand how it works. Now, there's a, a way to get over there, but we need to make a little ramp. So all you have to do is make them nice and small, and you can use that then to get over. Nice and easy. Don't get stuck on these ones. Right. Attention. Dr. Pierce requires you to note the following risks of dream overexposure. Significant memory loss, both quantitative and qualitative. Hallucinations of dreaded or annoying objects. Unrealistic beliefs about the lengths of hallways. And other side effects which have not yet been discovered or which cannot be understood. Now this is probably the most annoying room. Um, because you have just got to keep piling these up, piling them up and piling them up. And um, to make some sort of ladders or steps to get out, you can't, you can't pick them up after because it just makes more and more and more. So that's something to take into consideration. So then, once you've made a big pile of them, you can do a little bit of park hour and get up, and that's it. Nice and easy. We're not too far away from the most annoying part, which. Um, I'll, I'll show you when we get there. I'll let you know. Um, right, this one then. We've got to get the apple off of the button. And on this, because we can't pick stuff up, only duplicates it. What you have to do, this is quite annoying, but you have to... Yep, that didn't work. And you've just got to keep uh, messing about. If you press the right clicker, what actually happens is... Has that knocked it off? Perfect. It resets it. We're not going to reset it because obviously I won't be able to um, get it on that bit. Now this is the most annoying bit. I hate this bit. Remember, you can't pick things up, it only duplicates them. And there's a fan there. And the fan will blow the duplications all the way across. So what we have to do is get an apple up here on this button so we can get through there. Now, the easiest way i found is if... If you do this, like so, and then you can duplicate these. All the way up, if you can, so they don't roll down. Or try to, at least. It's, it's very annoying, and it's... Um, if anyone knows an easier way than this, then um, fair play. But I don't. Nope, nail it. Oh god, right. I might have to cut this bit.
And there we go. Oh, Jesus Christ, we've done it. Oh, all we have to do then is duplicate some uh, apples all the way to the button. That is extremely annoying. The the worst room, I think, in the, in the game, just because of how annoying it is. Um, but that's pretty much the only way I found to do this. And there we go. We've done it. Oh, wow. I've got finger ache now. Warning. Dr. Pierce is frantically submitting numerous spelling and grammar mistakes into the standard orientation protocol in a desperate attempt to counsel you. I have no subroutine to correct these errors, but I cannot compromise the integrity of the standard orientation protocol. You will not receive these messages. They would not make sense regardless. Right, on this one, obviously remember you can't pick stuff up, so you have to use your um, perspective. And if you right click it, or it should if you right click it, there we go. It'll get rid of them all, um, so you can get back through this doorway again. Attention, Dr. Pierce continues to input significant errors. I will interpret his basic ideas. Hello, my introductions are redundant. I am a real doctor who went to doctor school. VR has never been a mistake. I can help you, but I Hello. also do not Name know how. Name is my Pierce, Dr. Transmission Glenn. ends. To the Somnusculpt Welcome Experience, team of your care leader, patient years 10 development. Conditions struggle you whatever with? Yeah, so we had a little bit of uh, overlap there and a little bit of nonsense. Um, so we are now on 7am. Again, very slight changes. Um, oh, God, I promise I won't say that. I can't apologise enough. Uh, this is probably my favourite room in the whole game. I don't know why. It's, it's just really relaxing. Just a beautiful room. Beautiful room. Um, another radio, so we'll listen to that. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. This is a notification that you have reappeared on our monitoring system after a prolonged absence. Please continue to do whatever you did most recently and discontinue whatever you were doing immediately prior to that. Cool. Right, on this one then, there's a tiny little house, and if you've noticed inside the house, you can actually get into it if you make it big enough. So again, make your perspective nice and big. Get it dropped. There we go. Now we should be able to get in here. And we can. Right, now if you've noticed on this, there's a little doorway. So what we have to do is make the doorway a little bit bigger. So if we walk out of here. Or drop it like that say so the doorway should now be a bit bigger so we can now park our up onto this which we can awesome and we can get through here as well nice another radio kind of went wrong <laughs> um let's get through here this is the radio sorry i got i got confused Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. In addition to continuing and discontinuing as mentioned earlier, please also disregard any unsettling experiences that you may have recently had. Everything should have now reverted to being soothing and therapeutic. If this is not the case, you may be receiving this message in error. Right, so on this then, it should be pretty straightforward for you. Um, it's a massive Jenga block, and there's a door up there that we have to get through. There's a fan there. I'm pretty sure you've already guessed what we have to do. That's all we have to do. That's all we have to do. Right, now on this one, you might have noticed there's tons of different windows. Now, one of the windows you can actually pick up. Yeah, makes sense. Only one of them. 
Now you have to make the window big enough so that bar doesn't stop you from walking through. Once you've done that, see, I can't walk through there. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. I mean, we are kind of very small now. Um, and there's another little doorway, which should put us to the right size. There we go. Now, this is a cool room. Um, it's really unusual. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if we walk down here, we can then look up. And it <laughs> it's a completely different locker room. And it completely throws you off. It's a very unusual room. We'll listen to this. Hello. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'd like to read you my favorite inspirational quote by me. The worst thing you can do is focus on negativity. It won't spare you from the cage of death, the pain of disease, the cruelty of time, the cold shell of human nature, or the eventual loss of everything you've ever held dear. Whatever you do, don't focus on that. Right, again, you got a little uh, bouncy castle. Run up. Ooh, we have to make it a little bit a little bit bigger. So we'll get, pull right into the back corner. That should be big enough. Nope, not quite. Again, it's going to take a lot of messing around just, just to get it to the right size there we go we're in right now it throws us up here and it throws us into like a little uh, thing and now we can look down onto the uh, onto this area now remember this is the entrance to the um, bouncy castle and we need to be up there so if we pick the bouncy castle up and we spin it round and place on there then what should happen is when we walk out, we should be walking out of the bounce castle. Ooh. There we go. Don't fall off the edge. Right there. And then we can drop this down. We don't really need that. And that's it. Or maybe maybe we do need it. I've just completely messed up a little bit. Right, you've, uh, I mean, I, I've messed up, so what I'll do, I'll, <laughs> I'll do that again, and I'll, um, I'll, I'll cut this bit out, because, um, I've kind of messed it up, but yeah, you've got to make sure that you get the door big enough or small enough to actually, um, get through, so, let me get up here, let's do it again, <laughs> that's embarrassing, that's never happened before, we'll pick it up, we'll spin it round, we'll put it on the, Oh, hey up. We'll put it on the side and then walk out. There we go. Right. Sorry about that. That was a little bit embarrassing. Enough of radio. Hello. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'd like to thank you for triggering every single one of our 823 emergency protocols. This will assist us greatly in improving the system for future patients. Congratulations. Anyway, you're now headed in the right direction, and we should be able to initiate the emergency exit protocol shortly. Right. The easiest way i found to do this is if you walk through a big one, you come out into a small one. You'll see what I mean. Like that. And it makes the room much, much bigger. Yeah? Now, if you do it the opposite way around, it makes the room much, much smaller. So all we have to do is make sure we walk out, but make sure this is bigger. Right, so, so look how small the room is now. So again, we need to do the same again. Basically, the easiest way to look around it is if you walk through big, it makes it big. For example, like that. And if you walk through small, it makes it small. So we need to make this a little bit bigger, but still smaller than that. Like so. And that's nice and small now. So if we dump this 
there, like so, and then we put this on top of there. Let's see if we can get this to work, like so. And what should happen is, if we do it fast enough, this is, in fact, it's not going to work, so we have to walk through there. Um, we're we're going to have to make it a little bit bigger. There is some trial and error in it, and there is a little bit of uh, messing about. But this is the only way i found where we can actually do this. So, excellent. So we'll then make this nice and small. We jump over here. There we go. Can we walk through it quickly? Oh, I think it's glitched it out a little bit. It has. It's there. Look. It's quite annoying, but bear with it, and you'll uh, you'll you'll get there. <coughs> Again, if anyone's found an easier way to do this, feel free to let me know. But I haven't. So, um, oops. I'll I'll fast forward this. Don't don't worry. I'll. <laughs> make this a little bit bigger a little bit bigger excellent we'll make this tiny and then hopefully Let's see if that works. Oh, it kind of does, but we can't get through. So uh, we have to... There we go. Can we get through now? Yes, we can. And all we need to do is basically get into the uh, plug hole. And that's it. Now you might notice we are absolutely... Tiny. So if we pick these up... And jump down remember if we if we run through big then it makes us big it just makes it a little bit quicker to get to uh, the other side oh maybe the other way around make the room nice and small <clears throat> that's a little bit better right we'll drop this down or try to anyway and we'll make it nice and uh, big I mean, that's how big it is. It's taking forever to fall down. And let's drop down. Cool. Top tip on this, if you just met the house just so it's just big enough to get through, it makes everything else nice and uh, nice and quick. So let's jump in the elevator. Oh, that was um, a little bit more annoying than normal, so I apologise for that. But you get you get the idea. What you could have done is maybe put the door inside the actual um, keyhole. Um, but to do that is very fiddly. But you you could have you could have tried that if you wanted to. Right, we're back on three a.m. again. Let's walk through. <coughs> Emergency exit protocol initiated. Please prepare to conclude your Somnasculpt experience in ten, nine, eight. Error. Error logged by. Orientation protocol. Stand by for analysis. Error analysis complete. You are exhibiting signs consistent with an increase in fear, hopelessness, and frustration. This is inconceivable, as somnasculpt therapy is proven to correlate with a decrease in these emotions. Right. So on this, it's a little bit of a maze. Um, Patient was improperly oriented. Conclusion. Impossible. Reformulating. Improved hypothesis. Patient requires additional somnasculpt therapy. 
Conclusion. Emergency exit protocol cannot proceed. Emergency exit protocol has been emergency destroyed. So, it's a maze. Instruction. Continue with Somnasculpt therapy indefinitely on an independent basis, as all orientation resources have been exhausted. This concludes your standard orientation protocol. Goodbye. There we go, 3 a.m. Now, it is pretty much as simple as that, to be fair. You've got... So, 3 a.m., but it all looks a little bit gloomy now. So, it's starting to get a little bit... Um, well, a little bit interesting, let's say. So, I'm not going to say it. Don't worry, I'm not going to say it. We're in this room. Just keep walking around. Keep hitting it and keep messing about and... Eventually, as you're going to see, you're not going to be able to get as far. And it's going to keep pulling you back and pulling you back and pulling you back. It's all part of the game, don't we? You're not doing anything wrong. Right, this is much harder because up is down, down is backwards, left is right, and it's a little bit of a mess about. But as soon as you drop out the hole, or out the front door, should I say, Everything's back to normal. Um, so this, the reason for this is it's giving you a little bit of a hint of the next area. The next area. That's very annoying. The next area. Throws you into here. And now I was stuck on this for about 10 minutes. Um, but you can't get back off off. There's no doors you can get through. But if you look in your room. There's actually a painting you can take off and you can use it as a doorway. Like so. Another radio. Hello. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. Thank you for completing the Somnusculpt Standard Orientation Protocol. Before you begin the first phase of therapy, I'd like to briefly describe the finite and fragile nature of the dream state. Right, so now everything is completely disorientated, everything is all over. So we're obviously walking on a wall now. So if we w jump through here, we can jump through doorways and do all sorts of stuff. Um, and that's pretty much... I mean that's pretty cool um, and that's pretty much what what's what's happening so obviously we can't get up and down here uh, we have to get through that door um, you can actually move the door and it creates another doorway and then we can jump through that and it's just all little stuff it's gonna start throwing you off and it is gonna be confusing and it, it, it just keep powering through it again on this room there's a little crack in here where you can jump through another little radio of course, nothing is more challenging than the difficulty of changing perspective, of fundamentally altering your perceptions in a way that will enable you to face dire trial-by-fire scenarios with solutions that could not be found otherwise. So, in case you didn't realise what happened there, all you have to do is level up the, um, the the little thing and you'll fall through a crack. You can find the crack and go through it anyway, but I think that's part of it. Um, so now, we've got stairs, and if you look up there, we obviously have to use the stairs to get up there. So, oh. I'm not going to lie, I forgot about that bit. So, <laughs> so there we go. Right, so inside here... You've got a lift. Obviously, inside the lift, it takes you to the next area. I can't believe I forgot about that bit. I wondered why I couldn't remember them. Right. Now, this bit is very, very, very annoying, but I'm going to talk you through it every step of the way. Now, it doesn't matter which way you look first. That is always the way that is bricked up. For example, if I look left, that's bricked up, which means we can only go right. If we look right first, that's bricked up, we can only go left. Once you understand that fundamental, it makes it a little bit easier. So we have to go right to get out. So we need to look left as we're going around the corner. 
and now we can go right. The next one, we have to go left, which means we have to look right so we can go left. It took me a long time to work this out. Again, we have to look right so we can go left. And we have to look left so we can go right. And that's it. Once you understand that, it's extremely easy. Well, you've just seen me do it the first time, so. Right, the next bit then. It's starting to get a little bit more urgent now. In the sense that the music's starting to uh, kick off a little bit and it's all... And it is what it is, pretty much. Um, now, you might notice we've lost our little, um, our little thing on that, but you can actually walk on water on this, which is kind of interesting. Um... Again, because you can walk on water, you don't have to do it on this side. You can give yourself a lot more space. For example, that. And then we can actually... Ooh, we're a little bit off jumping up. That should help us out a bit if we can park our up here. And we can. Awesome. Into the bounty castle. Oh yeah, I forgot about that bit. <laughs> so, um, there's another radio. Finally, while we respect the unique progress of every patient, you must understand that it is possible to completely exhaust your supply of dreams, thereby entering a state in which you will not be able to wake up, even with the help of triggering mechanisms. Yeah, so obviously um, that completely threw you off, but you can get the knight and you can put the knight on the button. That's absolutely fine. So we're going to fall into this area again. Awesome. Door there. Again, don't let any of this throw you off. Um, there's lots of areas you can go. There's lots of things you can see. Um, for example, a nice, a nice bed. Uh, you can get through here, and there's all sorts of like hidden areas, for example, like that. It all leads you to the same place, so don't worry too much. Don't worry about missing anything, because it will all lead you to the same place. And there we go. Right, it's time to get a little bit desperate. On this, if you look, eventually you will see an arrow on a floor. There we go. So we have to go this way. Until you see the next arrow. Arrow here. So we have to go this way. Until we see the next one. The arrows are generally right in front of you. So don't worry about going left and right too much. Now we'll follow this one. It's a very unusual um, little puzzle this one. And it does go on a bit, and it makes you wonder if you're doing it right. But bear with it, as long as you're following the arrows. As long as you're following the arrows, you're going to be doing great. So don't worry about it. And there we go. That's all we need. Right, we'll hit the arrow. Uh, the arrow. Of course, I've been following arrows. We'll hit the radio. Please listen carefully for the sound of an alarm clock which will automatically play if you are approaching a destabilizing dream weight. Right, this is cool. So everything's up there already, but when we hit the alarm clock, it's completely thrown everything off, <laughs> which is very confusing. Let's get in the elevator. Right, now this is probably my second favorite area in the whole game. Um, you might wonder which direction to walk in. There's no right or wrong answer. Keep walking. And eventually, you'll hit a board. Keep walking the other way. Eventually, you'll hit a board. And just keep doing that. It does take a, a little while, but bear with it. There we go. And the next little area... I do like this. It's nice. There we go. And then in the middle, there we go. You have got like a nice little room. Can hit the alarm clock. 
there we go again there's a different slightly different ways you can get to each area but you, it's the same area you get to so don't worry about missing anything right so this little area then this is pretty cool so this is highly unusual it appears you have entered the sonascult diagnostic framework patients do not have access to this dream so there's a little area here and you can pick this shop up if you walk through here I mean it's a brick wall at the minute but as soon as you pick it up there we go you'll hear that noise and that's oh no I'm lying you got to be able to walk through this first oh I'm just not with it today am I so keep making it nice and big so you can walk through it warning unrealistic use of dream objects may result in dream integrity fail state 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 right can we walk through this now and you can, you'll notice that that is now the back door so if we walk through here it'll take us through the back door like so and it's pretty much unlocked that now and then if we walk through here we can obviously it walks us out of here nice and simple so far what you need to do on this is pick this up and drag it through here please paradox from creating any refrain explosive dream overload may result please paradox overload please overload for dream explosion this is just a waiting game now it's basically you've kind of destroyed your own dreams and this is where it gets to the most beautiful parts of the games it's like it's just incredible i'm going to stay quiet for most of it because there's a lot of talking um, and there's a really nice message at the end as well So you'll see there's lots of areas that'll say not an exit and stuff and it's it's all about just finding your way that, that's that's all it's about this radio hello my name is dr. Glenn Pierce and many years ago I had a dream I found myself in a place where I understood that each of us begins as nothing where everything I perceived was shaped by seeing it exactly the way I wanted to white space Again, all this is is about finding your way and um, the message makes it very very clear So this is like the lucid sort of dream state. Um, again, 
can. We can use the windows as a block to get up. We'll hit the radio. But in white space, I also faced the greatest challenge I could imagine. Because with a lifetime of life itself behind me, and all of the weight that it carried, I realized that seeing things the way I wanted to was not as easy as it used to be. Again, you've got kind of like a bit of an iceberg and a few containers. Um, you can actually get into there from the, uh, just from flicking the light switch. Now, again, you've got all these different signs. You're supposed to be following the signs. It's a little bit messing about here, but aim for the stairs. Once the stairs turn black, you can obviously climb up the stairs and just follow it. Right, this one I must have got stuck on for about five, ten minutes um, because all it's doing, um, all it tends to do is lead you into the same room constantly. Uh, don't matter which way you go. If you hug the wall. There we go. You can actually get out of it and get the proper exit. Like so. Another radio. You're well beyond dreaming now and further out than anyone has ever come back from. But we hope that you won't get discouraged. After all, if this is a place of pure perspective, isn't it also a place where a different point of view could make anything possible. Isn't that why you came here? Right, this is um, kind of like a game of chess. Now, you have to have a chess piece on a square because if you don't, you'll fall through it. So you've got two chess pieces. You need to make sure you place the chess pieces on each bit before you pick the next one up, for, like this, for example. And all you're doing is just walking back and forth. Nice and easy. And that's it. Um, this bit you basically put the block through the door and that allows you to travel through the door um, now we've got some cheese cheesy cheesy again place it through and you can bring the cheese back and you need to get up there so all you're doing is basically swapping swapping the items that, that's pretty much it it nice and uh, big we might be able to get up that and we can cool on this one all we're doing is falling down and we got until we at the bottom walk through the little doorway Again, this is a pretty amazing room. Don't let, don't let it get you disorientated. <laughs> just keep looking at the floor or the ceiling and just follow it. Obviously, move that out of the way. There's nowhere else you can go. That's the only thing you can do. And drop down. Now you'll fall through the alarm clock and if you look up you can actually see the alarm clock as you're getting further and further away. And it's now 8am.
and we'll hit the alarm clock. And I'll shut up. And I'll let the game talk Hello. you through it. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. And by now, you may have realized that all of this has happened exactly the way it was supposed to. You see, everyone who comes to the Institute does so because they feel that they are no longer in control of something important to them. But, more often than not, the problem is not that the problems we face can't be solved. The problem is that we become so afraid of failure that we refuse to see our problems from a new perspective. And so, we do the same things again and again and again. And therein, of course, we find exactly the failure we were looking for. Your life will always be a struggle, and you will always have problems. But today, you have the chance to see things differently. Even though it meant facing obstacles that seemed impossible at first, you thought outside the box, and you overcame them. Because you saw things from every angle, you understood them for what they really were. Because you kept moving forward, no matter how far off the path you were told you were headed, or how unexpected it became, you found your way. few minutes you'll be back in the real world and some part of you will say that none of this was real so how could it have really meant anything but just like the power of perspective itself it will have been as real as you believed it to be all you've got to do is wait That's it. That's the superliminal walkthrough, and what a beautiful message that was at the end. Um, if you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like. Um, if you want to see more walkthroughs, I do some Rainbow Six C stuff as well, and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, feel free to subscribe and um, show your support. Leave down in the comments. If there was some easier ways I could have done certain bits, feel free to let me know and. Uh, I'll remember that for next time because I will be playing this game again at some point. I I, I really like it. It's, it's, it's a nice game, beautiful game. So anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Um, again, if you've learned something new, that's all I aim to do. So thank you and I'll see you later.